more new content you guys liked in the last video timestamps are on the screen like i said in the last video i have new presets if you are trying to run up music video bags these presets are for you you edits can turn around super fast that's it um premiere pro pop art effect let me know what you think in the comments later or in Premiere Pro, I used a plugin to do the halftone effect or whatever, the cart comic book cartoon effect. I couldn't find any other effect for it, so I recommend getting the plugin, Sapphire. Everyone has it. Get it if you're just starting editing. Get Sapphire. There's a deal going on right now, I think, for Black Friday. Get it. Boris Sapphire. Get it. Research it. Get it. All right, the effect I used for the comic book type effect was Sapphire halftone and halftone color. You would think it's cartoon and cartoon paint. I mean, kind of. They look cool, but halftone and halftone color give it that comic book feel i'm gonna use halftone color for this uh preview or example so i'm just gonna uh s underscore halftone color right here you can look it up drag that onto my clip and if we look at our clip there's this crazy dot thing um i'm gonna set up my clip exactly how we do it but now that we know the effect we're gonna use we can get into the thing i'm gonna duplicate this so i don't mess up the original video and i'm gonna label these something different so look at the purple clips so my vision for this was as the zoom in here is going to be a freeze frame and then i'm just going to have him zoom out forward while he's in freeze frame and then have words in the background and that's like the comic book effect and that's kind of whatever the original was so first is we need to make a, a freeze frame of this so right here on the cut i'm gonna right click the second clip add frame hold and then i'll just freeze frame and then now i'm going to elongate this clip to the end of my preview just so we have time for it so now if you listen to it and watch it it'll be something like that freeze frame so now we have a freeze frame i'm gonna need to duplicate the freeze frame since he is going to be masked out and moving forward at the same time um whatever we're gonna have words in the background so this is gonna be my bottom layer i'm going to select it press alt on my keyboard drag it up and then it'll duplicate the clip now I'm going to label the top clip so we can see what our mask layer is. Select now the top clip, go to effect controls, opacity. You see this fit button right here. You can select it, press 50 and it'll zoom in. Move, use these things on the side to move around. I know I'm going fast, but you know, you can slow down the video to watch it. Um, and now we're gonna click our mask by selecting the outside. And yes, and I know all the viewers that have watched me for years are tired of me doing masks or see me doing masks we'll skip 10 seconds forward and i'll be done um so yeah so this is how you make a mask for the new guys and i'm going very very fast i recommend go you going you know slow and make sure it looks nice to how you're liking but since it's a tutorial and not a masking tutorial yet i'm going to select on the outside of the video now and i'm going to go to where the beginning was and finish it so now if we look at it, we have a mask. Nothing should change though, because we haven't done anything to the mask. Now with my masked layer, since we're gonna be moving it forward, I always say this, if you mask in Premiere and you want to move the mask, same with the cutout effects, right click and mask the mask layer. You can click inside and mess with the mask if you need to. But since we did that, it just changes a whole lot. So now we're gonna add the halftone color onto the mask now. So S underscore halftone color, and then now it's only affecting the mask, which we want. We're gonna increase the dot frequency because this looks dumb right now to where we think it looks good, just like this. And now if we take a look at it, Hope you got what you wish you something like that. Hope you and it pretty much looks kind of weird. I'm gonna add the halftone color. I'm actually gonna add just the halftone itself, not halftone color, to the background, the bottom layer now. And that's just to give it um, an extra contrast. I'm going to increase the dots on these ones just because extra. And now if you take a look at it, we already have Hope you got what you wish. I'm going to select the nested sequence now. And I'm going to go to the scale and position in my effect controls. Go ahead and keyframe it with my cursor in the beginning. I'm going to go to the end of the effect. Select my nested sequence again. And I'm going to move the scale to like 120 something like this and now if we take a look at it sequence render into out i know i'm going fast Sorry. You, got what you, you know this part and that's pretty much almost it and now we just need to add on the layers 
Now we're going to add the words on the screen. So we need to go down here on the type tool or press T on the keyboard. And then we're going to select the scene or just click on the scene and then our text should pop up on top for no reason. And then now we're going to type in our words. I think the words are hope, hope you got or something. And so I'm just going to type in hope right now and we're going to do some kind of text, some crude text animation in Premiere Pro. So I'm going to type hope and I'm going to drag this down underneath. And in the same one, you can see it's already behind him. I'm going to scale this hope up. And I'm just going to do two texts, but yeah, you guys get the gist. Hope. And then on the same text layer, I'm going to animate it. So I'm going to open it up on effect controls and right here where it says source text. Go ahead and click that. And I'm going to listen to the song now. And then right when he says, hope you, I'm going to type in you. So you'll see what I see. So watch the screen watch what I do with my, um, my cursor right here. So he says you right here, make sure my text layer is still selected with the keyframe. I'm going to click this hope, press space and type in U. And then I'm going to keep straight, uh, pressing space again, just so it's on the other side. So I don't have to move anything else. You can do this a different way. I, this is how I'm doing it right now. And, but if we look at it with the keyframe, the U pops up on the U and that's what exactly what we wanted with only having one text layer. All right. So now we need just need to make the text um, not look ugly. So with both of my texts on the screen, I'm going to select the text layer, press control A, it'll select both of them. And right here on the side, I have my essential graphics up right here. You might not have it since you have a different window. So just go to window and essential graphics and click make sure that's selected this text box right here click it um and then you know pick whatever font you want so i guess we can use this font um, i'm going to delete some spaces now so you can see my text in my effect controls layer right here you can see that it's adding keyframes so i'm just going to delete this keyframe and then move this keyframe up so now there's only two keyframes we don't get too confused with this keyframe still selected, I'm gonna press backspace on my spaces. Look, hold on. I'm gonna press, I'm gonna click in and I'm gonna press backspace. So my U comes back. Something like that. Now I'm going to move this to something about right here. And now if you take a look at it. Oops. I'm gonna change the first keyframe to the second font I used because I forgot to do that before we did it. Let me see hope. hope, you got, hope you got. Something like that. And now I'm gonna add just the halftone effect to the text now. It won't really do anything because the text is pretty much black and white. I'm messing with the settings so my text looks like it's affected. Um, I'm messing with the dots lighten right now so it looks like something like this. The dots frequency, if I up it, Put my dots like this hope you my dots frequency i'm gonna up it again and then now we have a comic book type effect for the dots like that i probably would have said different text and probably put it over here but you know tutorial this and then now we're just gonna add the chains from cinepax so cinepax i think i use cinepax 3d chrome effects the link is down in the description i think you get five dollars off five percent off if you use my link in the description cinepax has a lot of cool packs you should get some i use it all the time so here's cinepax um one out of three i couldn't i'm too lazy to find the other ones but instead of chains i'm gonna use this dna chrome one two three and maybe the iridescent one two i'm just gonna go ahead and drag those onto my project right here you can see my project bring this back up go ahead and drag those in now we can see these chrome things I think I'm gonna use this DNA Chrome. I'll, I'll use all of them actually. So it's DNA Chrome one, I'm gonna select it. I don't really need the whole video, so I'm only gonna select a part of it. Drag it in underneath our text layer. Now if we look at it, we can see it's right there. I need to zoom it in because this video has some weird dimensions like this. And now if we take a look at it, 
something like that. And instead of chain, instead of the DNA, I use chain. So I'm gonna use this other DNA to see if I can do something with it. Drag it into my timeline. This one looks a little bit better, but I want it going up and down. So I'm going to scale this in a little bit. I'm going to move the rotation to the left. Oops, that was too much. And then I'm gonna move the position to the right. And if we take a look at it, we'll do something like this. Hope you got with the DNA, I'm going to now duplicate the DNA. And then I'm gonna move it to the left now, the duplication. And it turns out to something like this. Hope you got yep. And I'm gonna add the halftone onto the DNA now. And then now we're just getting crazy with it. Now we have a comic book DNA chrome thing with text effect in Premiere Pro. Use it however you want. Don't just straight up copy this because this looks ugly. Use it however you want. This is what this tutorial for to teach you things. And that's how I did the Wise Eliocho thing in Premiere.